today, the team wanted to find out how did we get from a four-room HDB flat to a landed property in seven years. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, wow, to answer this, we really got to rewind back for, to the start, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's rewind back time all the way to seven years ago. Okay, yeah. Slightly longer than that lah, because we got married um, in 2013. 2013. Yes. Yeah, and then we got, we applied for the first our first BTO, yes, um, we got quite lucky uh, yeah. because we managed to get into a the HB scheme where they give us the a balance parity, of sale, the balance of sale, yeah, yeah. So we didn't really need to wait that long yeah. to get our first HB because I was pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so we got a HB at Jalan Tenterum there. Yeah, yeah. So at the point in time, I still remember we were still choosing quite a few options of HDB and things yeah. like that. And we actually decided on Jalan Tetherum because at that point of time, it was something that we think that we can afford. Yeah. yeah. It was basically purely based on whatever we could afford. And I remembered um, 442000 447. Oh, sorry. 447k. 447 yeah, yeah. Uh, before grant. Yeah. Before grant. And, yeah. and I think it was like, wow, one of the biggest price tags that we have yeah. to ever make in our lives. I yes. remember the time I was only earning $450 yeah. while you were earning about 2K plus. Uh, or 3K? Yeah, about 3K three, yeah. three plus. Yeah. Yeah. And, and together, that's why we had some subsidies. So yes. why was I earning only $450 was purely because um, I just left SQ. I was interning at his company, which he also had a business partner. So I was just an intern and, and, and I was earning $450 yeah. a month. Yeah, the, the, it's not that I want to pay her $450. The yeah, company yeah. itself is not very big. Yeah, <laughs> at yeah, the point yeah, of time, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just starting off at the point yeah, of time. Yeah. Um, of course. And also, I think that you, had a, you yeah. didn't have the control in the sale. So. Yeah, like I'm sure yeah. you wanted to pay me more, but then yeah. he also had another person to be accountable for. Yes. So yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so so basically yeah. got our first BTO, um, got yeah. the keys in like 2015, yeah. 2016. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that was uh, basically our first home. Yay! Yeah, first home. It was actually very beautiful. We actually renovated it. I remember, you know, the usual stuff, you go to Pinterest and then you know, find all the photos and everything. It, it was always my desire because probably when I was growing yeah. up, I lived in a landed property or like, you know, a condominium. So I always had this wish and a desire to go to a landed space or like a private condominium um, at least. And I think um, it fueled my drive yeah. to work very hard in mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So, but for me, of course, I grew up in HDB all my life. So um, at the point of time, you know what, I think it's just a natural progression to start from yeah. HDB BTO. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's unlike what a lot of people might think. You know, sometimes people see that, you know, whatever we have achieved, they think that, you know, maybe we were handed by our parents' money or, you know, our parents are very rich, they bought a property for us. Actually, that is very far away from yeah. the truth yes. because both of us have made our own money yeah. and we bought our own property and you know that's something I'm really proud of because yeah. also I think we now have the capability to support our parents. Yes. Yeah, and I think that you know the, the twist that came was when we both lost our business even yeah. though we worked so hard. I can tell you that we worked like I think mm. like almost seven days a week. Mm. Um, Saturdays it's like mm. you know working in the office as well. Probably only Sunday we take yes. the off. And we're working so so damn bloody hard but yet we lost our business due to a bad partnership so we trusted the wrong person and you know um, our company was just poof gone like that overnight we just had to restart our entire lives and it was very painful because i think that you know we already have two kids and having two kids and and being a failure at like an, as an entrepreneur or as a mother who cannot provide for her kids and cannot provide for our parents, it's not easy. Yeah. And and I'm thankful that you know the right people came along our path. But if I could look back and look at you know what were the key areas that we truly truly um, turned our lives right was really fueling our pain. So we were in so much pain that I think we used it to you know channel it positively. Mm. That you know we must take something of learning out of this situation and uh, we met Ivan um, and Ivan actually wholeheartedly shared with us about property investing about like you know um, 
I think industrial properties. Yeah. Yeah. So there wasn't really much for us to learn. Yes. Um, in terms of like you know it was so new to us that like huh where to start learning all yeah, of this yeah. yeah and and finally i think we learned industrial property we entered into it and that's where we meet our profits yes yeah so so i think um, when we look at what happened right sometimes going through a hardship does push us forward yeah um i think we are also fortunate that at the point in time we see we have two kids we yeah. have two kids right and mm. that's always, always been our our motivation yeah yeah to actually and do everything yeah do everything the... yeah. I, I wasn't interested at that point of time to to go and find a job and and hopefully that pays me well and you know what and just get by i found a yeah. job yeah <laughs> I, I i i wanted a very i envisioned a very different life for both of us mm. yeah and that's why i took back the plunge to although i lost a business i mm. took back the plunge to start up another yeah so sean uh, restarted business, yeah. the business I went to go and take a, a job because one of us needed to bring yes. in some salary. Yes, yes, yeah. So I think I think I, I, and then we were very fortunate, obviously, to meet Ivan. Yeah. Right? And, and of course, that just sparked our our first step into property yeah. investment, but which is can, industrial property. Like today, it was just so interesting. A friend actually asked me, like, what made Ivan want to share with you? Oh, yeah. Well, I never thought it from this yeah. point yeah. before, no. Yes. This angle. Um, and if I look back, right, it's yeah. because really we showed our grit. Um, we just were really mm. authentic about the space that we came from. We really genuinely just lost our business, mm. and you know, we don't have much, uh, But mm. what we have to give and offer is our passion, our drive, um, and we'll work hard. And I think what we did really well was to over deliver and under promise on. Small agreements with yes, him. Yes, yeah. And he saw that. Yeah. A yeah. Actually, I mean, there is a a saying out there, obviously, that that if someone knows how to make money, they will not share it with you. Or they will not share with you, right? Okay. I think I think that comes from a very scarcity mindset. Yeah. Uh, the reality is that I mean, obviously, Ivan is very good heart to mm. share with us in terms to in terms of what he has been doing and make money from it, right? But the reality is that there are so many properties out there in the market. There are so many yeah. industrial properties. Just because he share with us doesn't make him poorer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in I, fact, I like this yeah. saying. They say, my poor wonder. My poor wonder. That I means mean. cannot buy a finished one. You yeah. know, there is enough to go around if you believe in it. Yeah. And somebody else's sharing, like Ivan share with us, doesn't make him poorer. It, it actually gives him more fulfillment and enjoyment yeah. in life yeah. that, you know, he made two Two, two friends yeah. and uh, it, it helped their families yeah. until this day uh, we are always very grateful yeah. for that moment yeah it. and I think that's why today also I like to put on that whole hat of sharing openly yeah and because when I share openly at the end of the day also I need to know what I'm talking about and that then further improves my knowledge mm. I need to do a lot more research I need to know what I'm talking about and that yeah. just makes me a better investor as a whole yeah, yeah and this it cycle just keeps continuing yeah, yeah, yeah. it keeps very accountable it. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so we invested in industrial properties at a point in time there were so many naysayers people mm. saying that like you know industrial Ayo, property yeah. sucks la. Uh, it's the worst mm. asset yeah. class la. depreciating yeah. asset la. nobody ran out one la. Mm. why you buy la? you stupid la. Cannot rent out one like everything so you hear many <laughs> everything you hear before, right? Right, and and really, I think when you are two people trying to climb out of the red race and to have a huge water just brum on you, right? All the more, right? I feel like let me look. Let like, me prove them wrong. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so like you know, doesn't matter. I calculate the numbers already. It makes total sense. I went down on the ground to verify myself that it can be rented out. Ooh, yeah. the occupancy rate is great. So I think risk comes from not knowing what we are doing. And yes. from my experience, usually the people who never invested will be the ones who said like you know, oh, it's no good lah. Yeah. Because they never invest what. So obviously they they they, they say it's no good lah, and and they say it's no good. And, and they continue to don't invest. So, you know, it's a vicious cycle. But the key is, risk comes from not knowing what we are doing. Yeah. If we know what we are doing, we know what's the occupancy rate, the growth rate, the, the rental, the numbers, the ROI and things like that, right? Then we are clear. Yeah. And, and for me, that is why I, I initially stopped Sean from investing because you shouldn't move until you see it, until you really know what's the next step you should take. But after that, right, you know, after getting down the numbers, we should move into action. Mm. And so when I saw that, I had this eureka moment and I thought that, you know, hey, industrial property could help me make some money. And so 
um, to be really open here as well. Today we want to have an open conversation. Yes. We didn't have much money to begin with. Yes. And when we don't have, right, we create and we make things happen for ourselves yeah. by being very resourceful. So we actually liquidated uh, our whole life insurance plans. Not to worry, we weren't reckless. Yeah. We bought term insurance yes. yeah, at a cheaper price and a higher coverage. Uh, but we had that cash from our whole life plans that our parents actually bought for us. Um, um, it helped us a little bit and uh, with a little bit of uh, Sean's help, he started off with partnering with his elder sister and then I started to find some friends who could actually... Uh, your mom as well? Uh, my mom yeah. as well. Um, and then we bought in to a property together. Yeah. That gave us the confidence to buy our second, third and fourth by yeah. um, owning owning yeah. together. The turning point was the first four industrial property. Yeah. Yeah, that was the biggest turning point. Yeah, because yeah. it was a breakthrough in our own mindset yes. that, you know, we could be investors. So we saw ourselves as a different identity. Initially, probably I would say that, you know, I would see myself as a working professional or like a marketing person or like, you know, okay, I, I, I do this job really well. And that was it. I never saw myself as an investor, but after buying these four properties, mm. right, even though it was just four, yeah, I think it was such a turning point because I now start to see ourselves as truly investors. Yes. And once you form the identity, you continue to hone and master and yeah. become better at it. Yeah. You all start from somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think actually moving forward, of course, then what happened was that um, these four industrial property. Yeah. Of course, uh, we sold most. We sold them about one and a half years back. Yeah. Two years back. Mm. Yeah. Um, and this each gave us about average hundred and thirty thousand each. Yeah. Around each, there, hundred and thirty thousand yeah. because the, there was quite a good capital appreciation, about fifteen to twenty percent per yeah. unit. Yeah. Plus, we have collected rental uh, across the last, oh, the last um, three three, three, three years. years. Yeah, three years itself. Mm. Yeah. So there's four units, about hundred and thirty each. Probably that got us to about five hundred k in cash profit uh, mm. for that effort that we did for industrial property. Then we sold our HDB. Yeah. yeah. And that was a huge yeah. turning point. Yeah. We bought what, 447, uh, we sold 722. 722. Mm. Yeah. So from there, um, we had cashed out another close to 250k cash. Mm. And Plus then, CPF. then we still have CPF. Our CPF, um, of course, today at our age, we have about 130, 150,000 each in CPF. Each. Yeah. Yeah. And that mm. brings up to about close to about a million dollars Mm. in terms of CPF plus cash position mm. after liquidating mm. um, these five units. Yeah. Mm. So of course then, um, that was during the 2020, yeah. uh, the pandemic uh, period. Where we saw that yeah. the four bedroom new launch condominiums were super close price yeah. to the landed freeholds. Yeah. So we said, you yeah. know what, our key objective in life is to give our children yes. the best life and also to honour yeah. and to be filial to our parents. Yeah. So let's retire our parents, let us actually live together under one yeah, roof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so to be more specific, move. right, so, so what, was, what happened was that um, I was just looking, we were just considering if should we buy also new launches or what, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for ourselves as well. Yeah. And of course, uh, we look at uh, uh, Jitscape. Yeah. Yeah, because it's quite near to our place, right? So yeah. we just skip. Mm. Right? And we, I realized that the four bidders at the point in time were selling at 2.8 million. 2.8, 2.9. Yeah, for the so bigger, crazy. the 1,500 plus square yeah. feet, um, yeah. four bidder, right? Yeah. And then I realized that, eh, actually the, the landed property freehold, yeah. all right? Can get a 3 million. Is, can get a 3 million. It doesn't yeah. make sense. So why, said, why should I buy the, the, the four yeah. bidder condo, right? Then he said it only makes sense to go for a landed freehold. So we went around. No? So I remember that time during lockdown, we will wear a mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after that, we will be in our car. While no one was looking for property we went at the point of time, every we day. went every single day. Yeah. We drove around the estates. At least like four times a week. No, estates. four times a week, every day. Because you see, uh, yeah. you're all locked up. At least, it's yeah. so boring, right? So at least that was yeah. the enjoyment that we could go out. Yeah, and within, I would say, two and a half months, yeah. right? We found something that we felt was of very great value. Mm. Yeah, so, um, and then of course, that's when we took the first step to then buy the land, the property. Yeah. yeah, and today it has appreciated. Yeah. And, and of course, the appreciation is, is, is great. Yeah. And, and I'm so happy that beyond yeah. just uh, money, I think the greatest part is really living together with our parents and yeah. uh, our kids. Yeah. Yeah. And tonight we have a 
celebration yeah, party yeah, yeah, yeah. at home. So yeah. yeah. That's nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically yeah, that's how we got yeah. from BTO all the way down to landed property. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's crazy because the landed property appreciation that happened in the last two years is something that I don't know man. Uh, I don't think that in my lifetime I will see it again. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, I would say it's it's that that opportunity moment yeah, we grab it. Yeah, it's just that one then, moment. Yeah. Sometimes your life just hinges on that one moment, that one thing. And we are just so blessed, really, yeah. really. I think, um, to be honest, I think we were looking at new launches, but because it was so close price, we said, okay, let's look at uh, landed. I, in my reality box, I didn't even think of landed, actually. Yes, I yes, didn't yeah. think we could afford. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you don't count, you don't actually know that you can afford. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's good to keep track of that. <laughs> so yeah, so after journeying that whole journey, I think the last couple, seven years has been incredible. Mm. And yeah, just I hope that, you know, this story actually inspires yeah. some of you guys who probably haven't bought a property yet or you know you're in your journey i think we started yeah. off way um worse off because mm -hmm. we we started from a business failure yeah. with two kids and you know we didn't have much cash yeah, with us yeah. but i think the key thing is really putting ourselves out there to know the knowledge and to make decisions that we know are and are aware of what are the risks yes yeah. yes yeah i think there are so many paths to take yeah. Um, you can start up from the BTO paths if you have, you're starting yeah. from like us, yeah. um, very little to no money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you have some capital, you can start from private Singapore properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you already own multiple private properties, then you might you can start off with even investing if in you know, for us now we're scaling out our portfolio in UK. Yeah. Yeah. Because we pretty much used up our max <laughs> loan eligibility in Singapore. In, in yeah. Singapore right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we are yeah. diversifying our portfolio. Yeah, so I hope our little sharing session would have inspired you. And yeah, leave a comment below to let us know what other questions you want to know. And yeah, see you in the next one.